In today's video, we're gonna be testing out soil versus hydroponics for growing microgreens. And the first thing we need to do is go over our tray setup. Here in front of me, I have three of the standard shallow 1020 trays. Each one of these trays will be its own group. And for this experiment, we're gonna have two groups that are hydroponics and one group of soil. And for each one of these trays, I am using a mesh tray. Let's go ahead and talk about our two hydroponic grow mats. For our hydroponic mediums of choice, we're gonna be using our reusable grow mediums that we sell on our website. Both of these grow mediums are completely inert mediums, meaning there are absolutely no nutrients within them. And just like the name suggests, they're both reusable. With our hydroponic grow mats, all we have to do is place them into the tray. We'll first start with our silicone medium. Our silicone medium is a food safe silicone mesh and it's quite flexible and soft to touch. Place it into our tray and make sure that it's flat. Now we're ready for seed. For our second group, this is our stainless steel reusable grow medium. It's made from 316 grade stainless steel. It's a lot more durable and the edges are a bit sharper, so you do need to handle it with caution. Place it into our tray and we are ready to grow. Now both of our hydroponic groups are ready for seed. But let's go ahead and get our last tray ready. And for our final group is our soil, which we're gonna add six cups of the soil to this tray. With our soil in the tray, it's time to even this out and break apart any clumps. Before I seed them, I'm gonna label each of these trays with one of our tray clip labelers here. They just clip onto the tray and we use a piece of electrical tape to write our label. And now our trays are labeled. Before I seed, I like to give each medium a light mist with some water. That way our seeds stick and don't bounce. Now it's time for seed. I'm gonna be using this organic purple spouting broccoli from Tree Leaf Market. And for each 1020 tray, we're gonna be using 25 grams of this seed. One of my personal favorite things about the reusable grow mediums is how easy it is to seed my seeds whenever I'm seeding my trays. As for soil, whenever it comes to seeding day, it is a little bit harder to see the seeds across the tray as I'm seeding it. And I could see this being especially hard if you don't have good light in your space like I do. Now let's go ahead and get our trays misted. This is my personal favorite misting device. I love how this mister sprays water across my tray. It really puts out a good amount of water while still keeping it even, which really can make a big difference in your germination, especially when using reusable grow mediums. Now it's time to take a no hold 1020 tray and place it on top to trap in that humidity on each group. We'll also be adding weight to each tray. Now all I have left to do is place these on the shelf behind me where they can continue to germinate. Also be turning off those lights since they don't need them. And from this point forward, I'm gonna miss them twice a day, morning and evening. I'll see y'all soon for an update. It is the morning of day three for all three of these trays and they've been germinating for two full days. Let's go ahead and take a look at their germination. So far, it looks like all three of these trays are germinating at the exact same rate. Since they're not ready for the next step yet, we're gonna get all three of these trays watered and put them back on our shelf to germinate. I'll see y'all soon for another update. It is the morning of day four for all three of these trays. And what we're gonna do is remove the bricks and lids and take a look at our growth. Looking at all three of these trays, the germination on them looks beautiful. They're all at a really great height and we're starting to see a lot more of that yellow plant than we are dark seed hole across all three trays. This tells me that we are ready for the next step, which is blackout. Now, before we water all three trays and put them into blackout, I also wanna take a look at the height of each group. Personally, on all three groups, I'm noticing that they're really all about the same height right now, and it doesn't really seem like any of the trays are further ahead of the others. And I find that really interesting because at this current point, all of these have only been receiving only water. And technically, the soil tray has an advantage over the two reusable grow medium trays. The reason being is the soil tray naturally contains nutrients whereas these two are completely inert. So to only have been using regular water for these two trays, I find it really interesting how well it's keeping up with the soil tray. Let's also go ahead and take a look at the roots, starting with the silicone tray. So far, these roots are looking really beautiful and we have an abundance of them. Now the steel. 
Again, our roots are looking super happy and abundant. And lastly, the soil. Just like the roots on our hydroponic trays, these roots look super healthy. Now it's time to water. Then we're gonna take our trays that we were using for weight and flip them on top to make a dome. Now that these trays have been watered and placed into blackout, I'm gonna place them back onto the shelf behind me where they can continue to germinate. And later today, I'll come out and give them another mist with water. And I'll see y'all tomorrow to take these out of blackout. It is the morning of day five for all three of these trays and they have been in germination for four full days. This has consisted of three days underweight and one day underneath blackout. Now, since it's been 24 hours of blackout, it is time to remove these top lids. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at each tray. Taking a look at all three of these trays together, they have all had wonderful germination and I'm really loving the height across all three. And in my opinion, the height on these are all pretty similar. Now, some of you may be thinking, Mandy, that soil tray looks a little bit taller and a little bit fuller than your two hydroponic trays. Well, here's my thought on that. The soil sits up higher in the tray than it does with these two mediums. Because they're a hydroponic grow mat and they're quite thin, they're very low in the tray, which makes these look a little bit shorter. And the appearance of this tray looking a little fuller may just be an illusion because of the contrast between the soil color and the yellow plant. Of course, we're gonna figure this out later in the grow whenever it comes to harvest day. Now it's time to move all three of these into the next step, which is bottom watering. For our two hydroponic trays, we're gonna bottom water them with our nutrient water mixture. Our nutrient of choice will be Ocean Solution 203, and we're gonna mix it at 0.5 ounces per gallon of water. And then we're gonna pH balance it to the 5.5, 6.0 range. As for our soil tray, we're only gonna water it with pH balanced water because the soil already has enough nutrients in it. This way we can get a good comparison between hydroponics and soil for growing these microgreens. Before we get to watering these, let's go ahead and get them on our shelves and underneath our lights of choice. For my lights of choice, I'm gonna be using these 20 watt Burina lights. And real quick before I bottom water, I'm gonna move my tray clip from the front of the tray to the side of the tray so that way I can use it. And now we're ready to bottom water. For our two hydroponic trays, I'm gonna start off with half a cup of our nutrient water each. And then for our soil tray, we'll give it half a cup of that regular water. Now later today, I'm gonna to come back out and give all three of these trays their second watering with their designated water. And then over these next few days, I'm gonna to continue to water twice a day, morning and evening, or as needed for all three trays. And I'll see you along this grow to see how these trays are doing. It is the morning of day seven for all three of these trays, and I just want to give you guys a quick update on their growth. All three trays look really beautiful. On both our hydroponic trays, our canopy is nice and even, which is the same thing that we're seeing on our soil tray. And at this point in the grow, our two hydroponic trays have been receiving our ocean solution water mixture, whereas the soil tray is only receiving water. And one other thing that I'm noticing is that the canopies on all these look about the same. Our cotyledons haven't really opened up a whole lot yet, but over these next few days, they will begin to open more, and we should see these looking nice and fluffy. Anyways, y'all, I'm gonna get all three of these watered now and put them back underneath their light, and I'll see y'all soon for another update. Day eight. It is day 13 for all three of these trays, and today is harvest day because we are seeing signs of the true leaf across each one. At this current point in growth, they've been in the light for eight days, which means our two hydroponic groups have been receiving their ocean solution fertilizer mixture for those eight days. As for our soil tray, it's only been receiving regular water. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at all three trays before we get into harvesting. Looking at all three tray groups side by side, something that I'm noticing is that we have super uniform growth across the canopies of each tray. It looks super full 
cool and fluffy. Each tray also has a super good looking height. Something that I am noticing on both my hydroponic trays is that throughout the canopy, some of those cotyledons do look quite big and open compared to my soil tray where a lot of the cotyledons look a lot smaller. As for the coloration, I really love the coloration on each tray. It's a nice good green color and I personally feel like they look basically the same on top of the canopies. Overall, I'm extremely happy with how all three tray groups look. Let's go ahead and jump into the fun part, which is harvesting the trays and comparing the harvest weight. I'm gonna start with my silicone tray. These look beautiful. Whenever I'm harvesting these, I'm trying to stay just above the medium so I don't cut into it. From our silicone tray, we got 306.1 grams. Now let's harvest our stainless steel. I really love how broccoli microgreens smell. From our stainless steel tray, we got 315.3 grams. And now it's time to harvest our last tray, which is the soil group. Our soil tray had a harvest weight of 276.1 grams. I'm gonna get things cleaned up a little bit and then we'll take a closer look at everything. Now that I have everything cleaned up, let's go ahead and compare harvest weight. Our soil tray got a harvest weight of 276.1 grams. Our steel had a harvest weight of 315.3 grams. And our silicone had a harvest weight of 306.1 grams. That means that our overall winner was the stainless steel tray and it beat our soil tray by 39.2 grams. I also went ahead and combined the stainless steel and silicone harvest weights and divided it up to get our average. Our average for the high hydroponic group was 310.7 grams, which means hydroponics beat soil by 34.6 grams. As for the appearance of each tray group, they pretty much look the same to me. They're all about the same height, though I will say that the cotyledons are smaller on the soil tray than they are on our steel and silicone. As for the purple coloration, I'm seeing a little bit of hints of it in the steel, as well as some on the soil but I'm not really seeing it on my silicone tray. Now this could have been more of a light situation rather than the mediums themselves or the nutrients we used. As for the winner of appearance, I'm gonna lean a little bit more towards the hydroponic groups. The reason being is that those cotyledons were a little bit bigger throughout both trays. And I like that a little bit more than having these smaller cotyledons like I saw in the soil. Now let's go ahead and do a taste test. First, I'm gonna start with my silicone tray. So far, the texture of this feels really good. I'm not noticing any moisture within the canopy, which is something that I personally really like. I thought the flavor on the silicone tray was really wonderful. It had a nice crunch to it, and you can really taste that brassica taste. Now let's go ahead and try the stainless steel group. Again, the texture of this feels really good, and I'm not noticing any moisture within the canopy. Personally, I thought that the stainless steel tray tasted exactly like the silicone group. It had a good crunch and a good flavor. Now let's try our last tray, which is our soil tray. Again, the texture and feel of this feels really good and I'm not noticing any moisture in the canopy. I thought that the flavor on my soil tray was really good and that it had a really great texture. Personally, if I had to pick a winner for overall flavor, I'm gonna go more with the hydroponic groups. The reason being is I just really like that juiciness that you get whenever you grow hydroponically. Now let's get set up to look at the mediums. When it comes to the leftovers between the hydroponic groups versus the soil group, there's two things to take note of. With our soil group, this is a single use medium, meaning everything that's left in here, I'm gonna knock out into my compost and then I'm gonna start over. Compared to our two hydroponic groups, these are both our reusable grow mediums, which is exactly what it sounds like. They are reusable. I first just have to remove the roots from each tray and compost all that leftovers. Then I would clean and sanitize my medium and be able to reuse it again. To remove the roots on both of these, I just use our simple scraping tool here 
And I wanna go ahead and show you how I do that. I also thought it'd be fun to compare the leftover waste once we get the roots and stems out of each tray. First, I like to empty the water in these bottom trays. And then I'll just take the scraper and begin scraping off these leftover stems and roots. And now the stainless steel is ready to be cleaned and sanitized for reuse. And now the silicone is ready to be cleaned and sanitized for reuse as well. Now something you may have noticed between these two medium types is that the stainless steel can be a little bit harder to remove those roots and stems, whereas the silicone, it's really quite quick. Now for fun, let's go ahead and weigh these leftovers. First, let's start with the leftovers from our two hydroponic trays. From both of our hydroponic trays, we have 432.2 of leftover waste from these trays. And keep in mind that does include water weight. Now let's see about the soil. And from the soil tray, you can see how much more that is. The overall winner of this experiment is hydroponics. And as a group, it beats soil by an impressive 34.6 grams. I hope this video was able to show you that whenever you use hydroponic grow mats like our reusable grow mediums, they can keep up with soil, especially whenever you combine them with fertilizers. Now that's something that I personally love about using hydroponic fertilizers is that they give my microgreens a boost in growth. Let us know in the comments section, do you guys prefer soil or do you prefer hydroponic microgreens? I hope that you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. I'll see y'all soon for another one.